Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Shadow and Sun Show, and welcome back to another episode of Gatekeepers. With me tonight is Jade from Jade's Tabletop Tavern. How are you doing this evening? Ooh. Doing fairly well. Yeah, it's, and, uh, uh, you know... It... Oh, I was I just going to say, say I, a... Had a, I had a fairly uh, good day at work today. I got some stuff done, and then, you know, I'm... I'm reading through all the stuff for tonight and uh, getting my mind prepped for uh, how to introduce players to, to new games. Yeah. Uh, was uh, who, who brought this question to our attention? Uh, so this question actually, I think, came from you, uh, believe it or not, because uh, oh, we were really? um, actually just... Dis- yeah, yeah, we were discussing... Um, in the roundtable discussion, which uh, if you're part of our Discord, um, the masters and gatekeepers uh, get together at the second to last Sunday of every month, and we discuss the topics that we're going to pick for the next month going forward. Uh, We had an opening, a a sudden opening for this week, because it was supposed to be uh, homebrewing, but one of the members who was going to be asking the questions wasn't available. So we decided to go with a topic that uh, Shadow here uh, suggested. Uh, One of uh, two different uh, topics that he suggested, because, you know, note-taking and such. Um, Okay, I don't remember that. (laughs) Yeah, well, uh, you you suggested it. Talk about a senior moment. And I'm like, you know what? That... And it honestly, it's really fitting to be doing a um, an episode on how to introduce players to new games, given all the uh, turmoil and tumultuous events happening right now in the hobby as a whole. Um, you know, with all the the OGL uh, stuff that's happening, uh, the OGL 1.2 being quasi published, draft published, whatever it is. Um, so I think it's something that a lot of people should be talking about is how to introduce people to different games um you know new games that they may have never played before or maybe even never heard of uh i think it's it's a great uh lead-in topic for what i kind of want to see the the hobby do as a whole is to experience more of the hobby rather than just one or maybe two forms of it i i absolutely agree especially when you know is as much of a fantasy fan i am i I, i've got a real soft spot in my heart for sci-fi and it's just not getting the love it deserves let's face it folks sci-fi is is a genre that seems like it would be more accessible to more modern people who've never read any fantasy we've all grown up with things like star trek and star wars And, you know, obviously, you know, aliens and things like that. We've all probably seen those movies or TV shows, even even the 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 people in our lives that are not gamers. So why the heck not? Let's let's let's, uh, you know, get some people into some new stuff. Uh, Speaking of getting people into new stuff, I see we've got multi gunman hanging out with us. How's it going, buddy? Hope you're doing well. And. Uh, an- another great guy out there, Squirrel Hermit. If you have not seen any of his shorts lately, you've got to be able to spare two minutes of your so valuable time to to go check out Squirrel Hermit's channel. Um, hopefully, if if Squirrel is up for it, uh, my son and I are going to take advantage of your offer of your friend's artwork because we need some artwork for an upcoming project of ours and. The little guy would be absolutely honored if you would contemplate and consider maybe doing a little bit of voice acting for one of his projects. I believe it's going to be something like an anim- animated short or series of some sort. And when he told me about a certain character, I went, Squirrel Hermit would be the perfect guy to read off some crazy lines in his crazy style. So, Squirrel, if you're... Uh, if if you're up for that, if you're game for something like that, um, I see you said absolutely. I hope that's in reference to what I just asked. We will, uh, you know, we know how to get a hold of each other, but um, you've got such a unique voice, and no shade at all. I actually, um, it's a really pleasant voice, and why you haven't already got into 
voice acting even better. Um, why you haven't done so, um, let me be the first to tell you, you would make a fortune in all kinds of, you know, like, like cartoons and anime and things like that. Get yourself an agent and, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, throw me a couple of shekels when you get the chance. Also <laughs> see uh, our good friend Bo is in the, in the chat. Bo has got, a, he's also got a brand new channel. Let's get him up to 50. If he hasn't already got there, he's going to start doing some live streaming and some live gaming. Connell, Omen and myself are going to be in it. Possibly Mark for Mark's Genre Mixer. Face for radio and a voice for print. We also have, uh, we also have L. James L. Just entered the chat. We also have uh, Scott Clark. Oh, yeah. I, I, the, the chat's going by pretty fast. I wanted to mention him. And James, I hope you are enjoying that care package to the fullest extent of that. Just whatever you do, don't try to uh, do the wrong thing with the uh, the green thing I sent you because trust me that will not end well. I sent him some flock for his miniatures. Just oh, nice. Didn't want to use just didn't want to use certain words. Uh, hey, it's crafty. Hey, crafty. Loved what you had to say earlier. If you want to pop in for a bit, you are more than welcome. Uh, the, the links at the top of the chat. Anybody else? Uh, you know, if you've got stuff to say. We will try to get to it. I'm lagging on pulling up the the uh, highlighting the 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 chat boxes. I'm here. I won't be active. Very busy at work, but I'm listening. You know what, Crafty? I get it. Uh, real life's got to come first, which is something we should probably do a topic on one of these days. Real life, you know. Um, a lot of us have those things. I, I really don't have a real life. I've got an entirely made up fake life, uh, which is pretty much always online as much as possible. And if I'm not doing that, I'm napping. So let's say we get on to the first question. And if you don't mind, I'd, uh, I'm not sure exactly where to pop in that last question that I just came up with. Um, you want to start out with that or leave it toward the end? Uh, Give you a little more leave that to towards the yeah, let me mull that one over a little more. Because we could, we could, uh, we could pop that in between three and four, where it kind of probably fits. Um, you know, yeah, do sure. point count point. But uh, let's let's get on with the first question, and it it, it starts with a little bit of a uh, an intro. Um, a, a lot of the reasons why we would bring a game to the table is what I like to call burnout. I think we all probably call it that. I probably don't want to call it that. What other reason is there other than I found this great new thing. I want to show it off. Check this out. This, you know, maybe it's an old game and you just discovered it, or maybe it's hot off the presses. Um, but those are like, I think the only real two reasons why we would want to bring something to the table other than you want to kick your DM out of the table and put him in the, the, the passenger seat because you want to take over. And that I don't recommend. Just start another table another time. You know, don't be poaching, you know, unless, you know, you really know everybody really well because I've seen that happen. And it, it it can, you know, leave a sour taste when you do come back to the table with your, your regular DM. So... Um. Well, I don't know, um, because so uh, I can actually speak to real life on this one. Uh, uh, Scott Clark, uh, he's in the, here in the chat. Um, he and I uh, traded off there for a while, back and forth with the same group of people, two different games. He would game one night or he would run one week and then I would run the next week. So we have the same group of uh, players going and um, telling two different stories using the same game engine. Uh, or game system. Uh, so I, I think it can work. Um, you just have to work out with the other game master, um, you know, that it is going to be like an every other week or every other month type thing, whatever the case might be. You, you know, you work with your friends and, you know, you don't, you don't try to step on each other and, you, you know, make it a, a cooperative effort. That sounds like uh, good advice. Uh, nothing like, you know, irritating your DM or, or, you know, stealing players away. Definitely look for a different night of the week, if possible, to do something like that. 
you know, like we just said earlier, you know, real life is going to get in the way and very few people have time for more than one game a week. Uh, unlike myself, uh, I'm actually in quite a few games and it's kind of, uh, uh, it's kind of nice. I, I don't want to go too much into it because, you know, some people get, get jealous that, you know, I'm, I'm living the dream playing, you know, as many games, but trust me, I've earned it. I, I, I as a, as a, a forever DM of 25 years without a break this last year has been absolutely stellar. And two of the best games I was in this year were with not only Jade, but crafty Matt craft, uh, just absolutely refreshing styles of gaming not necessarily compared to my own style, but just the, the, the enthusiasm for a brand new game. And, you know, that, that's one of the things this topic covers is that enthusiasm of something, you know, new and shiny or old and dusty, but still just as viable as it was then as it is today. So let's get on with the very first question. What do you do when you need a break or starting to feel that burnout from your current campaign or character? So uh, I can, I can speak to some experience on this one. So I had uh, been running a game for about two and a half, three years. Um, oh yeah. That Scott makes a good point on that one uh, between our two games, going back to that uh, just briefly. Um, you know, my game was my game. His game was his game. And we didn't try to run each other's tables. Um, we, we had a lot of respect for the other game master and making sure we didn't step on each other's games, um, you know, too much, if at all. Um, I can say from experience based on, on from the first question, um, the running Wrath of the Righteous, which is a um, adventure path by Paizo using the their mythic um, game setting or game um, mechanics, I should say, um, was... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to, to explain it other than soul crushing at times. Um, it was it was really difficult. Now, don't get me wrong. I really enjoy the high high power levels of games. Um, yeah, I'm I'm the game master who loves going into levels 40, 50, 60 in, in 3.5 and Pathfinder. Um, I'm the kind of game master or player who wants to get up to those amazingly epic levels, almost God tier levels of play um, where I can swing and, you know, take off the top of a mountain with a sword swing. Like that's the kind of area I want to play in sometimes. Um, and mythic kind of allows you to do that. However, the way the, the adventure path was written um the players got so much more powerful than what the writers, I guess, had originally intended or planned for. Um, so as a, as a game master, yeah, I could probably rebuild things and break the mechanics purposefully on my end to circumvent some of the things that they could do with the monsters I had at hand or just rebuild all of the monsters to, to be better. But that was a lot of additional work on me to be running it every single week. Uh, not to mention, I was also having to run it through roll 20 because, you know, pandemic hit and, you know, I had to upload all of that data into roll 20 um, to be able to continue the game um, instead of having people over every night. So, you know, that was an, an additional factor and none of that stuff. No, there's no mythic powers built into roll 20. I had to program. I had to first learn Boleen, a programming language for roll 20 to make abilities happen that the system was never built for, um, for both the players and the monsters. Um, so I experienced burnout like you wouldn't believe, um, you know, it, it left me wanting to leave the hobby as a whole because it, that, that was just how bad the burnout was. Um, I was at wit's end so many times um, with the sheer power level the players had and the absolute no power at all that the monsters had. It wasn't until the final module that I'm like, oh, hey, you know, here's where the enemy's power lies. You know, 
it's only two mythic tiers behind the rest of the players. And, you know, the players are level 20 and everything in this book is now level 18. So, you know, that might be a challenge if I threw like 50 of them at them. Maybe. Um, so that that's what really, really burnt me out and sent me kind of barreling down the path of exploring as many um, tabletop role playing game systems as possible. Um, because it just, yeah, I, I didn't like the feel of Pathfinder uh, 1E with Mythic. It just, it was horrible. I mean, I even kickstarted the video game Wrath of the Righteous. Because, you know, at the beginning of the campaign, when I first started the, the module set, and then I never downloaded it because I was that just over it. I was like, nope, I'm not even going to bother with it. I paid the 80 bucks, never downloaded the game, never played the game, never even opened it just i was done completely i was i was ready to burn all my books and walk away really glad you didn't really glad you did man uh i i, I that's a, right around when i met you wasn't it yeah yep yeah yeah the gaming world in 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 general would have missed out you you always bring a lot to to these discussions and uh crafty it, it was it, it was still uh, one of the highlights of my gaming experience, you too, Jade. I actually was making a list last night of all the cool games I've been in just in the last uh, eight months, and it's it's pretty impressive. I got to I get to game with some some absolute legends in in our little uh, circle of family and friends. For me, when it comes to uh, getting over that burnout or dealing with that burnout. One one piece of advice I can hand out to you guys is go back to your original inspiration. What what inspired you to create the world that you're running or create the character that you're running? Go back and you know maybe it was a movie or a book or a TV show or or, or something like that. Maybe even just an image or whatever. Go back and try to reconnect with whatever got you to start this particular endeavor whether it's you know a, a brand new character in somebody else's game or running your own game now if it is a character in somebody else's game i would go back and discuss with your dm you know any any things that are bothering you away from the table you know possibly in an email or text or something so that it doesn't you know get into the wrong hands like last night bloodworth or um discussing you know some things that you'd like to see or experience in the game as a character maybe you can work with with the dm and you know maybe steer it in your direction a little more to you know obviously let them know that you're you're getting kind of burnt out and you know you don't want to take a break but if you need to take a break jade what would be your go-to break mental, uh, cleansing, as mental cleansing man um I don't know. Stepping away from the table, I think, was really introspective for me, um, even though it was, um, you know, uh, almost a year uh, later uh, when I you know, finally started coming back to uh, some kind of table. Mostly this. Uh, uh, it was table breakers that brought me back, really, because um, a lot of my friends, um, the real life friends were on table breakers and uh, they kept bringing my name up and you know, I kept getting shout outs and say, Hey, they, they mentioned you. And I'm like, uh, I, I have no idea what this is, what's going on. So they, they kind of dragged me back into playing uh, kind of almost kicking and screaming. But uh, once I realized, you know, the joy that I had from playing characters and, and being a game master and telling really great stories with players um, and with good friends, you know, that's what actually dragged me back. Um, the, the storytelling aspect for me is what really gets me going. Um, Cause I have, I, I have so many like stories of this one game world that I use all the time. And there are so many stories that have not been told in that game world. And that is kind of where I want to go and explore is finding those stories that people, um, Oh, <laughs> some real life. Yeah. Um, awesome. I, I look forward to your, your table, dude. I really do. 
Um, but you know, the, those stories that haven't been told in that game world are what is going to keep me at the table. Um, I'm probably not going to branch out to too many other worlds or too many other settings because I have my setting and it is mine and my friend Reese. Um, he, he made, you know, the, the world to start with, uh, he started in just one little area, just one little area. And then he started drafting up the, the continents that were next to it. And I'm like, you know what? If you're willing, I'd like to draft the other half of the world and we can work on this collaboratively together. Um, and from there, it just spiraled into this massive thing. Like if we were to write down all of our thoughts, all of the stories that we had ever played or conceived within this game world, it would probably fill out an entire shelf dedicated to, I don't know, probably an encyclopedia. Like it would probably fill out the entire section of shelves dedicated mostly for encyclopedias. Um, just of how rich the world that we have made is and the stories we haven't even told in that world. Um, so that is really what drives me back into it. Even after getting burned out, I'm like, you know what? I'm not wanting to tell the story in Galarian anymore. I don't want to work with Pathfinder's uh, world or setting anymore. Um, I'm going to leave it be. I'm going to focus on where I got started. And where I got started was the world that my friend and I built. And it's this world that, and we're telling the story of how, you know, the, cause the, the, the setting is actually called uh, the Chronicles of Magic. And we're, we're telling the, the story, um, the stories, I should say, um, about how magic influences the world and how it works with the world. And, you know, from the beginning to its end and all the richness there. Um, and, and that's where I want to be. That's, what I want to do. So I, I'm going to go find what other, whatever other game engines or systems are out there that will help me tell stories in that game world. Cause that game world is system agnostic. It does not belong to D and D. It does not belong to Pathfinder. It does not belong to any other system. It is its own standalone thing. And can any system can be run with it. One of these days you're gonna to have to send me some 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 paperwork, you know, some PDFs or something about it, uh, just so I can, you know, have an idea what you're talking about, because it sounds incredibly interesting. I could probably fill so <laughs> many episodes of YouTube about the game world with just lore dumps, with and and I mean. There's just so much to it. So, what about you? What about me? What? Oh, uh, well, your question. Um, oh. What are some of the ways you recharge your batteries when you start feeling burnt out uh, from your current campaign or character? Honestly, it's been a while since I've had that. Uh, and getting to be on the other side of the screen has been the biggest recharge for me as a, as a forever DM for, you know, I, I've been DMing for about 45 years and I got to play 25 years ago in a very short lived campaign that, that died because of me. And so I had to go back to, you know, the other side of the, the, the DM shield and 25 years of slogging through, uh, various campaigns, uh, basically like three campaigns I ran, actually four uh, during that time, and getting to get behind, you know, this the, get in front of the screen to be a player with people like Crafty and you and Bloodworth and a, a few others out there really n not only you know uh, took the the wheel away from me, you know, the the control, but it allowed me to relax and enjoy the emergent story to get into a single character and just relax and focus on that instead of all the other, you know, wheels and cogs and bells and whistles and all the things that go with being a dungeon master. It really, really was one of the best things I've, I've done for myself to, to get back into the hobby that I love so much to actually be, you know, see how the other half lives to, to 
feel what they feel, the anticipation, the anxiety, the thrills, the rushes, uh, even the disappointments, because as a, as a DM there, there's very few disappointments other than the players didn't do what you wanted. And if you go in with that sort of mentality, you, you're already on the, the, the road to ruin, in my opinion, run the sandbox. When they want to go into a dungeon, you can throw them in the seats of the, of the, of the roller coaster ride. And, you know, now, now it's the railroad, but it's short lived unless you're doing a mega dungeon and why, um, but that's a topic for another, another episode. It's just, it's so refreshing. If you get the chance to do it, I highly recommend it. And if you can't, there's a whole lot of other things you can do, you know, like getting completely away from the hobby for a day or two, do something completely different, go for a hike, a nice long walk, a picnic with the family, you know, go to the mall and, you just get your mind off of everything but the the hobby for a little bit. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but sometimes a real break will make you yearn and long for the hobby. It, you know, uh, <laughs> I love this. Read some Vance to recharge. Uh, I love this comment because I just read Vance for the very first time this last year. I had the books in my collection for decades and I just, I just, for whatever reason, they just kept it getting pushed to the back of the shelves, you know, cause my shelves are double and triple stacked, you know, so I have to dig for books and it's actually a fun read. And so th thank you for bringing that up. I gotta be honest. I am not a fan of the Vancean style of magic. I really am not. <laughs> have you read the books though? I I have not yet had the opportunity to read the books. Um, again, you know, a lot, I don't have a lot of time to physically read, so I have to listen to audiobooks a lot of the time. Uh, so if there's audiobooks of of these of these books, um, I'll I'll look them up and uh, and see what uh, what what I find in them. Here here's the thing, because the the whole term Vancey and magic is really a bit of a misnomer. The the the, the explanations and the narratives in the books. You 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 really have to stretch to see the the Vancey and Magic style in there. It's it's really kind of not accurate. The stories themselves are actually weird and refreshing, and a nice mix of fantasy with little tiny elements of prehistoric ancient technologies that are you know sort of woven into the story without giving it away that you know it was obviously a high-tech society because there's so few people left that it, it's really i don't know just it, try the first book the dying earth it, it's a short quick read and to be honest when i i was done with it i was i was bummed that there weren't more books to it and that's kind of a rare thing when i have so many books on my my plate to get through max how you doing uh, as a GM, I recharge by being a player. As a player, yes. I've never felt the need to recharge. Maybe switch GMs or swap from fantasy to sci-fi, but I've never been burnt out as a player. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, maybe, maybe getting close to it in one campaign, but that's not because of being a player or anything. It's just uh. The, the system is not my, my you know, preferred cup of tea. Let's put it that way. Uh, but I'm still having fun. And, you know, I, I get to play other games. And it's going to be a little while before I run the D&D game that I've been talking about. Because our good friend Hungar, he really needs to be uh, able to, to be in this game. I, I want to make sure he's in it. And if, you know, he's going to keep, you know, going in and out of the hospital... You know, I, I feel bad going on without him or starting without him. So I'm going to wait until, you know, he gives me the thumbs up and then we will go full on into that. In the meantime, I may uh, I may start something else, up, maybe a couple of one shot traveler or mini campaigns or something like that to, to get my friends, you know, involved. But, yeah, I. I'm looking forward to the burnout as a player, to be honest. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Go to the gym. That's a that's a you know, you know. I I would hit the heavy bag, but you know, then I'd get you know, the the police called out on my on my ass. So, um, <laughs> sorry, that was terrible. Uh, movies are good um, too. I'm not a big fan of Hollywood, but old stuff, we absolutely. Like I was saying earlier, James, if there's a, a particular movie or character or something that inspired you to make up the campaign or roll up the character a certain way, because who amongst us hasn't based a character on somebody we didn't create? We've all done it, whether it was back in the early days as kids, you know, naming our hobbits Bilbo and Frodo and things like that, or our, our, our wizards Gandalf or, you know, stuff like that. We've all done it. Don't Don't look at me and say you've never done it. Everybody's guilty of doing it. If you didn't, you missed out on being a, a you know twelve to fourteen year old boy playing his hobby when it first started out. Even even if even if you're you know much younger than myself, you you still should have been afforded that 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 absolute joy. What the heck is my dog eating? There's literally no food oh. in my studio, and he's eating something. You'd be surprised the weird stuff my dog will eat. You want to read this one out since you wrote it? Oh, yeah. So um, I think it was Bo was looking for a yeah, sci-fi game. Um, so the one I recommend, and I know other people have uh, said Cyberpunk and Shadowrun. Um, this one's an oldie but a goodie to me. Um, this is Dragonstar. This was put out by Fantasy Flight Games. Um, and it runs off the D&D 3.0, 3.5 uh, system. Uh, it's out of print, but I know there are places you can still find it. Uh, it is one of my favorite science fiction games um, or science fiction settings using the 3.5 game system. Even though it's got a lot of fantasy in it, right? Yeah, there yeah, there are fantasy elements in there. I mean, th there's um, sun swords, which are analogous to lightsabers. So, I mean, you could have your, um, you know... Uh, space wizards against a, an evil empire if you really wanted to like that you that is built into it uh it's, yeah. it's all revolving around uh, this one galaxy that is um subservient to the dragon empire and the dragon throne it's a really great system though yeah i have it i i uh i ran parts of it in one of my other games and it, it was very interesting and it, it was believe it or not the very first time i I came across the, those last pages in that book that, that everybody's talking about these days and we're not gonna, but uh, it was the very first time I'd heard of such a thing. And I was like, this, this sounds like this, this could be, you know, pretty interesting. And here we are 15, 10, whatever years later. And well, here we are. Oh, I know, Multi. You're always in and out of of the of the chats. Read the books; you will understand. Exactly. I, I assume you're talking about the Dying Earth, yeah, the, the Squirrel, the yeah. Vance, yeah. You know, and there's actually some uh, uh, because I I didn't have one of the books. I I discovered a a um, an audio book on YouTube that the narrator was just hysterical for the Cuggle or Cudgel. I don't think it's really Cudgel. It looks like it, but I think it's actually just like a letter off. But he's a thief and a bastard, and the narrator for it was just epic. I'm going to try and find it and, and send it to you, Jade. Uh, it was just okay. it was so, so entertaining. Okay. I, I, will, uh, I will look forward to that. Um, so Crafty, um, uh, being active in our Discord, um, also gave advice on uh, kind of the, the burnout aspect um, a little bit. Um, and that's listen to, you know, the war stories of other players and, and other game masters. Um, you know, if you have a gaming shop near you or a library that hosts games and whatnot, you know, have, have a coffee with some of those players or, or game masters. And get to know them and and listen to their their stories and their their really epic games that they've had and you know and exchange notes on that you know because that's one of the other things that really brings me into the the hobby as well is you know listening to all these really great times people had and I'm like man I want to sit at that table man I would love to be in that kind of game 
Um, and then I'm like, what would it take to run that kind of game? And then I start thinking in that direction. That really drives me in the hobby. Um, so thank you, Crafty, for uh, putting that into our, our Discord chat. Uh, he's got other notes, and I will bring them up when they are relevant. But thank you, Crafty, for being so uh, so verbose uh, in the in the chat and, and really taking part of it. Squirrel, what is this? Uh, I've never heard this. I genuinely recommend uh, Stragios Volume 1 and 2, circa 1880. Can you elaborate for us? And James L. being the card that he is, Hello, Michael. Uh, are you uh, are are, are you new here? I don't, yeah, he's I don't he's one of uh, my contacts. Yeah. Okay. Well, welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. I hope you enjoy yourself this evening. Sean, how you doing? Great to have you here. James, halfling women folk have names like Daisy and Rose. Males have names like Jumbo and Papa. No. So true. So true. Yeah. Charlotte, how you doing? How you doing on those uh, those minis? I, I expect to see hundreds and hundreds of photos real soon. Chumbo Bongwater, I like it. That's my next halfling. Yeah, I, I think there's going to be like half a dozen of us that are gonna that are gonna steal that. I, I'm not. I'm not because because J uh, J because James L will probably name that as his character on on my my high seas adventure. And if he doesn't, I'm gonna. I'm going to look at him sideways, but that's fine. He might have something else in mind. Uh, you know, when it comes to sci-fi, uh, I'm, I'm old school. I'm going to go with Traveler, and for me, okay. it, it, it covers everything. I can do literally anything. I can literally run any game with Traveler. Literally, if I wanted to run a Western game, there's uh, – Cowboys and Xenomorphs. If I want to run a fantasy game, I can grab the old uh, – who put that out? The old Thieves' World supplement. Anybody else out there remember that? I was really amazed when back in the day, Thieves' World, you know, the Robert Asprin, I think it was, uh, anthology of stories with co-writers about the, the, the place called Thieves' World. And it had conversions for all kinds of different role-playing games you know, like RuneQuest and D&D. &D. And I was like, Traveler? You're kidding me, Traveler? I can, and and it was that moment that I realized, yes, I could, in fact, run any game using the Traveler rule system. Mages, I entered my name into a halfling name generator once, and the result was Mungo Chub. That, uh, that, that sounds Not like surprising. something you would, that sounds like something you would need to see a doctor about. That's just me. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting a webcam. Still waiting on the hot knife. Good for you. Good for you. I'm going to have to watch some more of your stuff first. So you know what? Please do. We did an episode on the hot knife. Uh, I let my son, you know, cut up some plastic, and he absolutely loves using it. Bo got one. They're they're a lifesaver when it comes to trying to cut really flimsy, thin, tiny model parts off the sprues. You just got to be careful because while you may be focusing on what you're cutting, the blade can easily start melting into something nearby. So just be fully aware um, when you are working on it. Oh, yeah, you're right. It was Chaosium. I, I really wish I had never gotten rid of that. I'm going to have to go look that up just because uh, even though I didn't love all the Thieves World books, I really loved the Thieves World setting. I think it was before I'd gotten my hands on the Lankmar setting, which in, in a pinch is just as good, if not better, because I absolutely love Fritz Lieber's works, the the uh, Swords and Devil Tree on through the uh, Knight and Knave of Swords absolute phenomenal books if you haven't read them get yourself a copy and uh enjoy so how about we move on to question number three sure. which is the basic which is what it's all about how would you recommend a new game to your table jade oh man so um having 
having the burnout that I had with uh, Pathfinder 1E and the the mythic uh, system of rules, um, I I went on this epic quest uh, to find an RPG system or, or game rule setting or core core rules that would really let me tell the story I, I really have been wanting to tell for the last like five, six, uh, no, actually going on 10 years now. Um, and that's that's the first story of the Chronicles of Magic setting. Um, it's it's going to be the very first story. It's, it's set in the Bronze Era. Um, and there are no adventuring classes, so to say. Everyone starts out as like some kind of crafter or some kind of uh, hunter or, you know, basically a Bronze Era job type, um, an archetype of, of jobs. Um, and that's where everyone starts as, but they can kind of explore and branch into paths, so to say, or into the adventuring life. And I really didn't. F so I, I went and looked up Conan, the original Conan um, uh, game setting. And the the Chronicles of Magic is all well, it, it's about the magic uh, in a lot of ways. Um, and the, the magic system that I want to use for for the Bronze Era is word-based magic like words of creation words of uh, of um you know the, the godly words that have the power to alter reality that's kind of the magic where i wanted to use and i was looking for the longest time at pathfinder first editions words of power and i liked the theme but after the whole you know chaos of mythic i'm like I need to get away from Pathfinder entirely. I need to get away from the 3.x engine entirely. Uh, so I looked at Conan. I looked at uh, Bronze and Blood. I looked at uh, so many different engines. And I read through probably 40, 50 unique game systems. Just looking at the core rules and how the magic was supposed to work and how combat worked and how social encounters were meant to work. And... I just I was not having a great time looking and reading through these because I'm like, I can't get a player to play that. I can't get a player to, you know, want to discover what this other engine is um, because it's such a departure from what they already know, which was the 3.5 game system. And I'm like, so I need something that's going to be closer, that is not going to be so restrictive on how to play the game and, and how, you know, to work with magic. Um, like uh, Conan uh, had this uh, mechanic in it that if you were a, a spellcaster, you would eventually lose your mind to, you know, the the power and, and become corrupted by the power of magic. And I didn't want that in the game because um, at that point in the in the the setting, magic is at its purest form and everyone has not, you know, it's not just one or two people have magic and they lord it over people. No, everyone in the world has magic. Every single person is capable of casting magic in, in that setting, in that time era. So I didn't want the restrictiveness of, oh, if you cast magic, you have to roll some kind of test to not become evil. And I'm like, no, I, I don't want to deal with that. So any system that had that built into it, I'm like, you're out. Not going not gonna to use you. So eventually I landed in index card RPG and I found the quick start rules to index card RPG. And I actually found this through, um, I think it was uh, Dungeon Craft uh, with Professor Dungeon Master. Um, he's the one who actually got me into that path of looking at index card RPG. So shout out to him, you know, great, you know, thanks for, you know, putting me on that path. And then I found Runehammer forums and all, you know, from there, I'm like, you know what? This is a great engine. I really like the index card RPG engine. And the reason I like it so much is because it is very DIY. It is meant to be a DIY engine for game masters to be able to build whatever they want, however they want, and make it as restrictive or free flowing as they want. And that's what I really wanted right there. I'm like, yes, that is how I want magic to run. And I'm, I will build the rules that I want to use and I want to see at the game table. And I want to see, oh, nice hero quest. Yes. Um, have I, not, I read through it, but I didn't like certain aspects of it. I can't remember what they were off the top of my head. It was over a year ago now. Read it. I've added my collection for decades 
and it, people keep bringing up Glorantha, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds familiar. And I finally found this uh, earlier this week, and I'm gonna have to put it on on my my list of games to read, even though it's Steve Jackson, um, whatever. Uh, I, I I like a lot of his other games, so we'll just leave it at that. But yeah, Man. so. Like I said, you know, I, I, I went to find this new engine and then I'm like, okay, how do I get my players to want to play this amazing thing that I have found? Um, you know, the, so I've, I've explained how I went and found this game engine and, and how I fell in love with it. So how I got my uh, some of my players who were playing in my three five Pathfinder game um, to play it was I'm like, hey, let's have a one shot night. We take four hours, we play through a brand new game engine you've never played through. I will slim down everything. I will tear out all of the stuff that you don't need to know. And I will give you only the core mechanics that you need to play the game and the abilities and all of the explanations for what it is you need to play the game. And that's it. And it really it slimmed it down to about three, four pages at most. Um, and from there, I was able to say, okay, here's how these things work. And I actually kind of go over it in my first episode of the Beneath the Door series on my channel. Um, you know, I kind of go over character creation. I go over, you know, some of the core mechanics of how to play the game. And you can actually go get the quick start guide for Index Card RPG 2nd Edition. Uh, it's on Drive-Thru RPG. I actually tried looking it up on Big Geek Emporium. It's not there yet. I don't know if uh, it's because Hank, uh, Hank Renfernal is the uh, author of Index Card RPG. I don't know if it's because he hasn't heard of uh, Big Geek Emporium yet or if he hasn't been able to put stuff up there or if there's some kind of exclusivity deal he's got with um, Drive-Thru. He also has his own uh, shop, though, Runehammer Shop, so he can sell his own products. Um, highly recommend Index Card RPG. I'm, I'll, I'll scream that from the top of the roofs, you know, because... If, if there's a game engine out there that, you know, you like, but there's just certain aspects of it you don't like, you can always tweak it. And this thing is meant to be hacked, modded, and, you know, put together with duct tape. Like, that's what this game system is supposed to be about. Um, but yeah, so I, I slimmed down the rules enough that my players could easily grasp it in about 10 minutes. Um, and then we started playing. And as they played, they they started just intrinsically and you know instantly understanding how the game was supposed to flow. It, it was a D twenty based game, but they're like, oh, so all of this does this. Yes, all of that does this. Correct. And you know by kind of slimming it down and breaking it down to its most basic terms, it allowed the players to well get into the game faster. And get into their characters faster. Um, so that's how I introduce. Uh, and I'm gonna, if I'm going to introduce a new game engine or game system to somebody, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear out just the core mechanics and be like, this is what you need to know. And then I will start introducing the other nuance rules to the players. Like, okay, from here, here's how we build upon this and how we can, you know, use these core mechanics in this way. Um, and it'll just lead to faster like pickup by the players if you can do that for them like like here's how it works here's the just the core mechanics and then you can add the stuff on i can attest to all that having played it with you uh i'm, I'm actually looking forward to playing uh the game again one of these days hopefully uh when we yeah. run through our cycle of each of us running a game hopefully we'll we'll get to see some of the other maybe genres if not you know running those same characters which i thoroughly enjoyed and you know i'm all <laughs> about campaign play he, he knows i've been bugging him since since we started making up the characters well when are we gonna run them again and real quick <laughs> elf nice to have you here uh yes you do get around i see you all over the place And uh, Fat Gamer has also joined us this evening. Oh, hey, what's happening, buddy? Uh, apparently, uh, we, 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 we sparked a, a Little Wars miniature war game discussion, which is something I was actually going to bring up is, you know, actually 
playing a board game or a miniature game or a war game or a video game or something like that to recover from burnout or or that sort of thing it it you it may seem you know a little counterintuitive maybe but it, it really can actually you know hit the spot especially if you're a dm and you're you're just you're just you know not feeling it getting you know cuz sometimes we feel you know a little a little uh underappreciated or um, a little put upon, you know, to, to cater to our players, you know, weird ass desires when, when they're running their characters, they want to do stuff and you're just like, Oh my God. Um, so sometimes doing something for yourself can be just the ticket to, to recover from that. For me though, when I want to recommend a new game to my players, um, I, I'm a little sneakier. I'll just put the books on the table, you know, uh, knowing that my players are going to, what's this? Oh, it's just a game I'm playing with some other guys. What? You have another group? Oh yeah. I thought I told you guys about that, you know, stuff like that, you know, little, you know, it, it, you know, it, it may be a little underhanded, a little sneaky, a little dishonest at times, but you know what? So what? Uh, if, if it gets, it gets the point across, you know, they'll, They'll flip through it and go, hey, this looks cool. And then I don't even have to really ask them if they're interested. They'll, you know, they'll they'll tell me, hey, why don't you run it for us, you know, or uh, can we join or something like that? Oh, no, no, no. We got a full game. But, you know, I, I could run a game, you know, uh, on an off night or something like that. Um, just, you know, sometimes players will – will really rail against an idea of a new game. Oh, we'll never come back to this game. We do that, you know, and in which case you can just, well, we'll play it on a different night. And that way, you know, our regular night is still our regular night. And, you know, maybe some other night, you know, maybe not all of you can make it. And, you know, if everybody really likes it, you know, we'll come back. All my, you know, all my worlds like Jade, I'm sure we've got extensive notes and we know how to do some record keeping, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm in a game with my son. We literally haven't played a year and I know exactly where we are. I know exactly what his characters were doing. <laughs> and as soon as he's got the time, okay, you're in the middle of the snow surrounded by elves. You know, I, I, I you know, when you've been doing it this long, it, it, it's like, you know, any other kind of career or job, you, you learn it or you find a new job or you get replaced or whatever. It's, you know, it's not rocket science. You know, we're, we're we're literally, you know, just under the, the profession of professional, you know, writers or novelists. And, and most of us really should get off our butts and actually write a novel or a book. But we, we've all got the chops, you know. So, mm. you know, it, it it's not that hard. So who else do we have coming in right now? Uh, let's see here. We uh, uh, uh guns back. Yep, fat gamer. Oh no, he's uh, not. Out. He's. I, I got the message that he's leaving. You're leaving us, man. Uh, what the hell? No, I get it. You know, uh, real life and that sort of thing. You can always come back. You know, uh, I, I right before the show, I I have another device. I was watching a video and I put it on pause and it's still plugged in and on because the show I watch. If I don't watch it, it will. The, the 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 YouTuber will delete the video. Maybe some of you guys know who I'm talking about. Comes out at four four thirty avocado time. And uh, if I go back to it, it'll be gone. So I learned the trick of just pausing it in the middle of it. So it it won't be gone when I get back. Um, so you hmm. guys can you know you can come back to us whenever. Um, We're not going anywhere. <laughs> no 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 worries TFG. Uh, you're always welcome here, you know, just, just, just as, you know, everybody else in the chat, we're, we're all friends here. You know, we, we may not get along outside the gaming universe, but who cares? Cause that's not why we're here. You know, if you want to talk, politics, go, to my son, go to my son's channel um, and, and he'll school you. Trust me. Just ask Connell. Connell will not. Mm -mm, nope. 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 E even some of the old, older, you know, more educated in the ways of politics, guys look at him and just are like, where did you learn all this stuff? I, I'm serious. He comes up with stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, 
you are only 14 years old. You could not have watched that much YouTube to have learned all this. And I know they're not teaching you at school this stuff. Where are you getting it? I, I, he's literally, I mean, I don't know. Am I the only one who sleeps with, with YouTube on? Because <laughs> I, uh, I, he does it too. I don't do that, but uh, <clears throat> I know what you mean. No way, Alfate. Uh, same here. And I love that game. God, I can tell stories about that game. Galacta and Legos. That's how young I was when I started playing that game. Galacta and Legos. One of these days, man, we're going to have to play a game of, of Galacta together. Welcome back, Scott. Uh, don't worry about kids. I mean, do worry about your kids, but don't worry if you got to go, you know, give them some attention, you know. It's it's probably you know after dinner and uh, you know that's sometimes that's all the time we get to be with our little ones and uh, fortunately tonight my sons are doing a school thing and um, he's you know he's embarrassed of us so we we don't go to his school things uh, you know he wants to keep his his reputation you know we don't want to cramp his style um, that sort of thing. <laughs> James is really starting to appreciate how RPGs are different. Thanks to all you guys. You know what? Um, they really aren't though. That that's, that that's kind of the underlying thing. You know, once you get past the idea of, you know, you're going to be the way we talk, the way we get into the character, all the RPGs are the same. It's just which dice you roll at which junctures and what genre you're playing. I mean, let's face it. it it's, it's, it's it's nothing more than cops and robbers with with die rolls, you know, cowboys and Indians, you know. It, it really, you know, that's what it is, and that's why I was so glad when when my son was was in the backyard with his friends, telling them what they were going to be doing as they were playing their pretend games, and I'm just watching watching the DM gene in him at you know four and <laughs> six and eight years old, just watching. I'm like, oh my god. It's hereditary, guys. So all of you DMs out there, go out there, make yourself some gamers of your own. You know, tell your wife, hey, I want another kid. This time it better be a boy. No, I'm kidding. Girls are fine. They 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 are you know a highly sought after commodity in the RPG world. I hate to put it that way, but tell me it's not true, right? We we need more. We need I mean, more. I I got a gamer gamers. life, so <laughs> I know. So what the hell? You know, why aren't you making? <laughs> Little little role players. Uh, there are maybe, reasons. Maybe, maybe maybe we'll cut the show early so so Jade and, and the missus can you know. No no, I see a blush. Yeah, that's funny. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> no, you never say I'm good. You say well, you just well, just agree. And, you know you don't want to sound like you know. You're you're here. That 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 that's a uh, that's a topic for not on camera. <laughs> You look at him. It's great. That's great. So let's say we maybe move on to the question that we didn't put down, but we were talking about earlier. Yeah, sure. Let's let's go ahead and get to that then. So when is it a bad idea to bring up a new game to the table? When would you recommend against suggesting a new game. I've got a couple of answers for this one myself. Um, Number one to me of like when not to suggest a new game to a group would likely be while you're in the middle of a campaign. Um, And, and I say that because, you know, there's a lot of people right now, especially right now because of the OGL nonsense happening with, uh, with, uh, Wizards of the Coast that everyone's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to switch this game to Pathfinder 2E or or whatever the case might be. Um, like, you you can do that. Like, I'm not going to tell you don't do that. Well, no, I am going to tell you don't do that. Stick with the game system that you already started in. Wait till the next game to start up or look at other game systems. Um, and if you're going to be the game master of that game system, know it like read through the core mechanics and know the core mechanics if you don't know the core mechanics don't introduce it to your table yet you need to understand how the system is supposed to work before your players are supposed to figure it out um so 
and like I said, you know, don't don't do it in the middle of a campaign. Don't suddenly switch, um, and don't introduce it out of the blue if you haven't thoroughly understood how the core mechanics work. That would be that would be my answer. Okay, I was thinking more like you know when when the party is at a cliffhanger, or <laughs> <laughs> you know okay. I mean, things, things like that, uh, that sort of thing, or. Um, when you know the when the game's getting really good and or or you've just taken on new players, things like that, really not a good idea if you just bring someone new to the table, you play a couple of games and then you start talking about another game, they're gonna be out the door, you know, right quick just because they will sense that uh these guys aren't serious or something like that. Um To be honest, you know, it, you you really got to read the room. You've got to, you know, especially if you're, you know, if you're the DM, you, there's there's a lot of ways to, to to broach the subject. But if you're if you're a player and you start recommending another game, you can really irritate your dungeon master who's worked years or decades on a on a particular game, and now you're recommending, you know, everybody just you know bail and and try a new game. That's that's really gonna rub your DMs uh, the wrong way, and and maybe even the other players because you know there there could be players that are not coming close to anything like burnout. They may be having the time of their lives and see you as stealing their thunder or you know just being the jerk at the table that just wants to play another game just because I. I had a, a certain player uh, a while back uh, that would constantly do this, constantly, you know, well, let's play magic instead, or let's do this instead. I'm like, I just traveled for 12 hours to get here to Dungeon Master. No, uh, I, I can go back to my hotel. You know, if you guys want to play magic, I didn't come here for that, you know, type of thing, you know, or, you know, let's play a board game instead or, or other things like that. And I'm like, you know, needless to say, I haven't talked talked to the guy in six years. But uh, you know, as, as a player, you know, have a little consideration for your DMs, and, and you know, understand that they 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 do go to a lot of work to bring the the game to the table for you. It may not seem like it, even if they 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 come without notes and books, and you know, they just wing it most of the time. They're still probably dedicating quite a few hours of, you know, thought processes to coming up with, you know, possibilities and alternate, you know, routes and things, you know, trying to, you know, predict and plan for all the different things you guys are going to do. And it takes up quite a bit of our, our, our free thinking time. You know, we could be, you know, doing other things and, you know, unless it's something that that you know everybody has been dying to get a hold of, or like a game you guys have been talking about, and you finally scored a copy, um, just just be polite and be considerate of you know your your poor mis mistreated dungeon masters. And Storm and Shadow, welcome to the show. Uh, Storm and Shadow is a, a friend of ours from over uh, Nathan's channel. Uh, good to have you here. He was also uh, one of the winners of our giveaway. And I will be mailing your book out this Saturday, I hope. I can only get to the post office every other Saturday. Uh, so please bear with me, you and Cal. And Travis, if anybody's seen Travis out there, uh, tell him to get a hold of me and give me his address uh, because he's uh, been rather absent lately. I haven't seen him in a couple of weeks. Was it Monopoly? Uh, if it was that yeah. game, I understand completely. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, so Crafty uh, has some thoughts on this as well. Uh, this is, again, part of the Masters uh, discourse in, uh, in the Discord channel. Um, if he's with his regular group and uh, they're in between campaigns um, or they hit a lull in their current game, uh, he likes to recommend that they play a quick start of a completely different game or a different system just to try it out. 
Um, and you can actually find a lot of, the, and I do agree with this, and you can actually find a lot of these quick starts on uh, Drive Through RPG or, um, you know, maybe even on the, the game manufacturers or publishers website. A lot of them are free. Uh, there are some that are only like maybe five or six bucks. Um, and, you know, you, you could have a lot of fun trying out brand new systems with just the quick start rules. Um, or, you know, some, uh, sometimes they're in the, the like beginner boxes. Um, you know, and that's, how, that's what drew me into index card RPGs. I went and got the free kickstart rules, um, just to, or not kickstart, but uh, quick start, I should say, uh, just to see what it was and see how the core mechanics and everything played out. Uh, and that's what really hooked me in. I want to read uh, Storm and Shadow's comment here. If I were to want to change systems when I started a new game, I would explain to my players about the kerfuffle with Wizards and how it's going to affect my game. Um, I don't see that, you know, look, guys, I I'm not a 5e guy. Uh, I never will be. I, I you know, I, I get it. It's a place like second edition where a lot of people came into the hobby. And that's always going to hold a special place in your heart just like AD&D is for me. You know, um, there's not a lot of AD&D players out there, but the few that are out there, they, they, they cherish it and, you know, hold it in high esteem for, you know, reasons besides the fact that it's the, the better version of D&D. But um, because it, it's, it, it's where a lot of us came in, we've got that nostalgic tie to it. And, you know, that, that's a hard thing to break, you know, uh, unless you're going to another genre, and the, then I fully, fully, absolutely approve of wanting to swap out a game for another game, you know, because sometimes, you know, especially after playing a fantasy role playing game for, you know, years and years or decades or, you know, the better part of one's life, I could see where you really just, if you see another dragon, you're going to, you're going to throw up, you know, you're just going to, you're just going to, you know, you, you fought literally a trillion orcs in your lifetime and, and you just don't care anymore. Let, let the orcs, let them take over. I don't care. You know, that kind of thing. And, and you just want to, you know, hop inside a spaceship, grab the, grab the stick and, and, you know, head for the, the, the farthest, you know, rim of the galaxy, you know, you know, what, whatever your preference is at the moment, it's really hard to, you know, not want to do that. That's why, you know, we're having this discussion because so many of us do have other genres that we really enjoy. It's a shame in, in a way that, that fantasy, you know, stole 90% of the glory when it comes to role-playing games because there are so many genres out there, you know, from everything from Westerns to superheroes to sci-fi to horror you know, there's reasons why these movie companies will continue to put out Western movies, you know, and millions of people will go see them. And if you were to stand outside that theater with a copy of Boot Hill, I guarantee you, you'd find like 20 players that are like, or 20 people, I should say, that are like, what? There's a game? And I get to be the, the, the cowboy and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's, there's, there's reasons why they keep making, you know, Marvel movies. There's people out there that would absolutely love to swap, you know, genres for a little bit, if not, you know, an entire, you know, day of the week to to join up with a game like that. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I was trying to read somebody's. Yeah, exactly. Pulp, the the, the whole bit. The, the, that's one of my favorite genres, and that literally can can you know cover a lot of different genres technically but to try and like i was saying don't 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 insist on changing the game just because of the politics the politics that aren't written into your book this is sort of a new thing so if you guys want to go out and play some 5e or continue your game maybe you know maybe you know wind it up you know uh wind up the campaign get everybody to the happy ending or the TPK, which whichever you know you prefer, and then then that would this, be a great. Bit of that. that would be yeah, fa face rip, right? Uh, um, you know, if you can do that and you can do it subtly, 
and you know, and you can speed it up a little and, you know, without, you know, just handing it to them on a silver platter, um, you know, then, then you've got a perfect place to say, Hey, you know what? We've been playing five E or, or whatever, you know, for a couple of years now, I got this game over here, maybe, you, you know, or, or better yet come into my, my parlor and take a look at all the role playing games that, that I do in fact own, or, you know, Maybe, you know, maybe we'll play a couple of board games or a war game for a little bit while I recharge my batteries. And, you know, maybe while I'm recharging my batteries, I'll keep showing you various role-playing games that I'd rather play. You know, and, and one of the other ones. Um, so I don't know about other game stores, but my my local game store has a used book section. Um, and that's a great way to also explore other game titles that are out there, other game systems. Um, cause he's, uh, currently they've got a lot of, um, or at least last time I was in there, they had white wolf in there. They had fantasy flight games in there. They had, um, I think I saw chaosium in there. They had Warhammer 40 K. Um, so I mean, th there were all of these game systems in the used book collection uh, and there were some core books in there as well as quick start uh, boxes um so i mean maybe if you have a local game store that has a used book section go check it out you know you might find some really great steals in there um as well as maybe even garage sales like i found uh my uh l5r uh beginner box actually at a used board game sale um at a board game shop at a different board game shop um, so I picked it up cause I'm, you know, I've always been interested in L5R, Legend of the Five Rings, and I've never been able to play it. Um, and I think I can understand why there's not, it, it's very niche for some people. Um, there's not going to be a lot of people who are, are into it, uh, as much as, um, myself or maybe even Kai, Kai, I think would be the most into it. Uh, as, as, as a matter of fact, I think he is the most into it. Um, I would love to sit at one of his tables for that. But, you know, you, you can go find used board game sales and used book sales, and you might get lucky. You might find a, a game that's been out of print for 20 years and be able to go, hey, this is the core rules for this game engine. Uh, let's run it. Let's see, you know, let's see what it's like. Can, can I say again how jealous I am that you have a board game store and actual game stores? Dude, the only bookstore I have what? within within a hundred miles of where I live is a uh, Barnes and Nobles. There are there is not a single used bookstore. There is one game store, and it's a slash game comic book store, and they sell literally no gaming products, but they have a place oh, for you man. to play Magic the Gathering, and they have a place for you to buy comic books and T-shirts and all that crap. It's a gigantic place right next to a gun store, so you know I, I would be there all the time if it wasn't so dang far away and it's it's ridiculous how do you have so many cool shops and here i am in sunny california and there isn't one to be found even if you go into la uh which is about an hour away from where i live there are like no bookstores anymore used bookstores and i i know there's a couple of game stores but you know if i got to go to la for a game store i'd rather just drive to texas and that's like, you know, 12 hour drive. So here's the secret to us having so many board game stores in our relatively large city in the middle of nowhere. That's the secret. It's in the middle of nowhere. I live There's... in the middle of nowhere, California. Ch Chicago is three hours away. St. Louis is three hours away. Uh, the next closest big city is the Quad Cities, and that's like two hours away. Um, beyond that, you've got uh, Bloomington Normal, which is another hour away, but that's college towns. And then, then there is going to be game stores there. But then the next Sorry, major Harry. you know, city, huh? The, the next <laughs> the major college. city is uh, Champaign-Urbana, again, a college town. So it might have some board game uh, uh, places there, but... You know, being in the middle of quite literally nowhere is conducive to finding like-minded players and gamers who want to hang out. And where are they going to go? They're going to go to a game store. Now, 
I will say that the um, the four game stores we have, uh, I think I, actually it might be five because there's one in uh, across the river in Washington. There's the zone which moved from Creevecore to Grand Prairie. It's more of a comic book shop anymore. Um, but we also have uh, cabbages and or kings and cabbages or cabbages kings. Um, that's in the Heights. That's, and, that's a great uh, name. I, that is a great name. Yeah. I've got one that's just two blocks away from me, and that's just for fun. Um, and then there's one out in Canton, which is about a half hour drive for me. Um, but it's kobolds or cabinets and kobolds, kobolds and cabinets. Um, and, you know, all of these stores, they, they kind of have the same thing in, in, in common with one another. They sell board games mostly. But they have space for players to come in and play Magic the Gathering. They have places for people to come and play tabletop role-playing games. Um, so, you know, if you have a local game store near you, support them because that is a place you can hang out and find, you know, like-minded players and gamers. Uh, you may not get along with everyone, um, but another place you might go is libraries. Um, my, I've got a local library that is hosting a D and D night uh, every, uh, I think it's like second or third Monday of the month. Um, but they're wanting to run five E. Uh, this is back in like November, December timeframe, um, or no, it was October. Um, they want to run five E because it's the most current um, rule set that everybody's wanting to get into. I don't know about now, but back in October, uh, I I'd, I'd never run five E, and I was asked by someone is like hey you're an experienced game master do you think you could run this read through the rules in about 30 minutes yeah i can run it so um you know that's that's another great way to meet other gamers is if your library or other places have game nights that you know they might have tabletop role-playing games or even board game nights Oh, just moved to St. Louis. Sorry, I'm I'm catching up in chat. Um, yeah, same here, I, same I, I I used to live um on the Illinois side of the river of St. Louis. Um, a lot of really great places to go there. Um, and uh, I would say St. Louis can be good, but it also has its dark side, just like any other major city. Um, but uh, support the Cardinals. Hey, Bruce, baseball. welcome to the show. Where were you an hour ago? Just saying. <laughs> no, I, I get it, man. I get it, you, you know. So uh, let's move on to number four. Uh, sure. What can you do if your table outright rejects your offer of a new game to your table? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um so I haven't had that happen just yet. Um, my table has been, uh, the tables I've been to have been fairly um, lenient, I, sh I should say, um, about the game engines I introduce. They're willing to give it one or two tries, but then after that, um, they might be like, yeah, not my thing. Um, if they out and out just say, no, I don't want to play that, then you know it's kind of maybe time to go back to the drawing board um and find a different game engine that or maybe have them suggest a game engine uh, that they would like to introduce to the group that's a really good idea I, I didn't even actually think of that uh you know if if everybody's you know open to an, a, another game night or another game or taking a break um mostly because most of my regular old old friends they own all the same books I do, or most of the books I do it with. Uh, like some uh, one friend of mine has some books I don't have, and I'm constantly trying to get them from him because he rarely plays anymore. But uh, I never thought of that. Um, that's why you know, with the previous question, I I kind of really try to judge the room, read re read my friends. You know, if they're you know if they're talking about you know a certain you know anything that's like close to the genre I'm actually wanting to play. Like, for example, when they were talking about the Marvel movies when, like, Iron Man first came out, I'm like, now's my chance. Heroes Unlimited? 
all right. And we 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 played that we played the hell out of Heroes Unlimited for well over a decade. But uh, I started a new campaign um, with Heroes Unlimited. But um, you know, if they just out and out, you know, reject the idea, look at it as a bit of a compliment if you think about it. They they dig the game that you're running so much that they, they they're 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 good for the rest of their days. They just want you as their DM and this campaign, these characters, and you know that's kind of one of the few ways we actually you know get a compliment without fishing for it. If you know what I mean, you know we're supposed to always ask you know what'd you think of the game? You know is there anything I can do better? Like we actually give a shit. I'm gonna keep running my game my way. If you've got a complaint, file it, you know, mail it to me. I'll get it, I'll read it, and you know, I'll I'll circle file it when I'm done. You know, um, you know, only partially kidding, you know, but you know, in these modern times, you know, everybody, you know, wants a little a little, you know, progress report after their game, you know, what'd you think, et cetera. Uh the 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 real the real test of your metal as a DM is people want to come back. They want to keep playing and they don't want to quit playing. That's, you know, that, that, you know, we're guys, you know, we, we, we rarely compliment each other, you know, we'll punch each other in the shoulder, you know, or give each other a noogie or, you know, uh, you know, stuff like that. It, it's sometimes real hard for us to, to say, you know, Hey man, that was a good game. Thanks. Et cetera. You know, with, with us more professional type gamers who, you know, play with other dungeon masters, it's a little different. But sometimes your regular guys, they, they don't know how to, you know, be anything other than, you know, who they are, which is, you know, your friends, but they, they don't really want to admit to it type of thing, you know. So take it as the compliment that it is. Uh, and who knows, maybe later on down the road, you know, if you, if you, you know, mess with them enough and, you know, kill them enough and, and, and you know, take away all their stuff, maybe, maybe they will want to, you know, run a different genre where we're, you know, magic items and, and things like that aren't a big deal or, or, you know, something like that. But for the most part, um, you know, if, if you start, you know, laying books on the table and trying to be sneaky and they just look at you and just say, no, you know, he's back, you know, pull back the books, put them on the other shelf, you know, just like, Hey, just empty in my backpack, man, from my other gaming group, you know? And then they'll, then they'll get jealous and they'll be like, well, 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 you know, and, you know, maybe work, work them from that angle. But for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm mostly kidding. You know, you, you shouldn't have to, you know, psychically, psychologically manipulate your friends to get them into a game, um, which is going to kind of lead into our last question, which is. Well, Crafty, you... Crafty has something. Crafty actually has something on this other one as well. You want to bring that? Okay, so... bring that up. Yeah, so um, in, in our Discord chat, uh, Crafty actually said something uh, to the effect of what he never does or never says is, uh, why are you playing that? You should be playing this instead. Um, and he goes on to say that this is horrible ad uh, advice, you know, uh, that has never worked on anyone. Uh, so, you know, never, never go, you shouldn't be playing that game. You should be playing this game instead um, or this game engine. Um, because all it's going to do is really, um, as he says, embolden people to not and be adamantly opposed to whatever game you were suggesting. If you're saying you shouldn't be playing what you're playing, you should be playing this. Um, so uh, Crafty says never do that because it's just not going to go over well. And I agree. Um, you know, having people go, oh, well, I don't know why you're playing that uh, that kitty game over there. Maybe you should uh, play a real game. Well, you know what? That's going to make me go, why would I want to play a game of assholes? <laughs> Take care, Elf. Um, you know, I, 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 yep. Oh, uh, Elf's leaving? Or Elf. Elf, yeah, I saw that earlier. Um, yeah, so that, that's definitely one of those ones that uh, I was playing. Um, I can't even remember what game it was. Um, it, it was at uh, a shop somewhere, uh, I think down in the St. Louis area. And someone was being an absolute jackass. Um, I'm just going to say it. I know YouTube is cracking down on the, uh, the cursing, but at the same time, this guy was being that. And um, he kept giving us hell for playing the game we were playing. 
and then he, he kept trying to get us to play. I think it was, I think he was trying to get us to play OD and D or AD and D, one of the two. And um, just his attitude and the way he was talking about how we were playing the game we were playing made me want to say, I will never. In, and, you know, until the heat death of the universe, I will never play that game. And, you know, eventually I did try AD&D and OD&D. Um, there are some aspects of it that I actually do like. Um, there are other aspects when I was much younger that I just didn't conceptually understand. I, I, I understand some of them now. But um, the, the, the being a, a jerk to players playing whatever game they're having fun with um, is just going to make them go, yeah, I'm never going to play the game you're into. That 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 is, I honest to God, the truth, and I can speak from experience absolutely, on that one. Absolutely. Um, I mean, unless you're unless you're talking, you know, uh, superhero twenty forty four or something that's, you know, uh, it, nobody here knows what I'm talking about. It's it's literally <laughs> the very first superhero RPG written, probably even before I was born. No, it wasn't. It was late seventies game, and it was just absolute dog mm. water. But you know, uh, or or if it's you know, a, a, there's a couple other games out there that I think we 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 all might agree on. I'm not going to bring up any names, but you know, there's there, there's some stuff out there that's 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 pretty bad and universally reviled. But um, you know, whatever. If if you're having fun, that's great. You know, maybe you figured something out about it that we didn't. You know, I mean, with all the choices out there of games to play. You know, if you actually can find a group of people that get into, you know, one of the more obscure games, that's freaking awesome if you think about it. You know, you found a way to, yeah. you know, break the mold and, you know, go outside the lines and stuff. More power to you. And uh, CBK, CBK, sorry. Welcome to the show. Uh, nice to have you here. I just saw that you came in. You know what, I, man? I, I Every see... single one of us is your friend, whether you like it or not. So there. <laughs> uh, I do remember what game I was playing at the time. I was playing White Wolf Vampire the Masquerade. And uh, this this guy came in with a bunch of uh, uh, beat up uh, books. And I do believe it was uh, AD&D that he was trying to get us to, to play instead. Might have been Savage Worlds but I'm fairly certain it was AD&D because I, I remember the art on the, the, the art I think is the same as uh, my monster manual. So, uh, and Scott brings up a good point, you know, beating someone over the head with your idea doesn't convince them you're right. It just convinces them that you're well, an ass. Right. And absolutely, Rick, we, we actually, uh, we have to be, you know, in, in a lot of ways to, to deal with, you know, a room full of people and, and, you know, herd them to our table and, and, and get them to, you know, learn the rules and, and, and do the things. Uh, it, 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 it's weird uh, to think about, you know, what I've learned when it comes to that. I, mind you, I, I did uh, uh, study psychology in college, but to think that this would be a better avenue for those skills than, than, having gone into that profession it's it's you know it's 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 fun to think about and absolutely mages you know what um have you watched youtube lately have you seen the garbage that's out there seriously they're, they're gonna cut they're gonna crack down all they had to do was stick with the not made for kids and you know watch the kids lie on their thing and, and you know that they're the did, were they not around when the warning labels came out on all the albums back in the day and how incredibly well those albums sold yep. doing this, do, yep. doing this is literally like saying, well, we don't really want anybody watching our, our, our platform anymore. Go on over to rumble or bit shoot or, or whatever, if you need a full dose of profanity for the day, cause we're all a bunch of prudes. Um, <laughs> it's absolute insanity. I think they're just using it as a way to go after specific people that they don't like to do curse, and in which case that would just turn a whole bunch of uh, people into, you know, bickering 
jerks going after each other. Oh, you banned our favorite so and so. Well, now we're going to go after yours because they curse too. Come on, get get a grip, folks. This is just retarded. Favorite comedian George Carlin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was uh, the one that I uh, brought up earlier with that Scott said. Um... <laughs> I don't, I don't believe I forgot this one. Oh my God! Thank you, CBK. This is the, this is it. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. All the way back from AD and D, the original Dungeon Master's Guide. You want to play Gamma World? Your players don't. Portal opens up. You step inside. And of course they do. They know they do. They know they're going to want to. And then they'll just be mad because, you know, they're surrounded by, you know, mutants and and talking plants or, or cowboys and Indians or spaceships. You're like, oh, well, now i got to find a way home. You know we're never going to find a way home. You just want to play Traveler. Prove me wrong, you know. Um, tell me you don't like the game now. But yeah, that, that's such a genius idea that we totally overlooked. I mean, it's underhanded and sneaky, but you know what? You know, if you don't let them know beforehand and then you act like you roll some dice to see where they go, you might just get away with it. No, they didn't figure it out, says Max. They have bad, wrong fun. Be sure to tell them <laughs> maybe they'll leave the hobby and take the hobby. God, I can't read this. It's so tiny. Can you read this for me? My eyes are uh, Yeah, give me a sec. Uh, let me find it. Oh. Uh, Sorry. Let me where go? Where to go? Yeah, there we go. Uh, no, they didn't figure it out. They have bad wrong fun, uh, but uh, be sure to tell them. Maybe they'll have uh, leave the hobby and take their shitty game with them. Um, so I think that my that was in reference to I think us playing uh, the, when I was playing the the, the kitty game, uh, and then the guy wanted to uh, you know have us play his game instead. Uh, I think that's what he's referring to there. Um, you might. You might, Scott. You might just not realize it. That's not necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> so. uh, a lot of a lot of really active chat tonight, and uh, I thank you guys for that. Thank you for being so active. Streisand effect, right? Hmm. Yeah, we, we, we try as well when when my son and I are are, are recording videos. Uh, you know, we started that way. You know, he was he was 11 years old, and uh, now now he's 14, and you know he curses like a sailor. Don't don't let that that uh, that that uh, demeanor you know fool you for a second. Uh, the things I've heard come out of his mouth just absolutely. What are they teaching these kids these days? And, you know, uh, every once in a while, though, uh, profanity is absolutely required. Well, so long we as the word is down. used um, correctly. Pardon? So long as the word is used correctly, it doesn't, you know, oh, it, yeah, it, right, it right, shouldn't right. bother anyone. Like uh, an ass was a donkey. <laughs> calling someone jackass is calling them a donkey. Um, you know, it. Like the, the words have meanings. Don't take the meanings away from them or change their meanings just because you want it to mean something else that it doesn't mean. Well, except for certain words that can actually be used in literally every possible context, like the F word. Um, you, you, can, you can actually... It has diversity. I was trying to explain that to someone the other day, uh, and they just, to this day, they still don't get it, but... Uh, uh, Sean says, we all wanted the albums they said would ruin us. And did it? Did it ruin us? I, I don't think well, so. I think we all turned out just fine. I think fine. the jury's I mean, still out on on some of us. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but those people aren't here with us right now. So, you know, they're missing out on the fun. Love and those warning label albums. <laughs> I, I know. I, I still have some albums with them on them. Uh, just, just you know, because I hang on to stuff. I think Puffin Forrest said he did something like that to get his D&D &D group. 
to try World of Darkness or something like that. Yeah, that's it's a phenomenal idea. You just open a portal, and, or it doesn't even have to be a portal. It could just be a door. You open the door, you go through it, and boom, you know, the door slams shut behind them. Now they got to find a way back. Um, it, you know, it, it's sneaky. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes... You will have some players who will rebel against that, though. Right. And very but, negatively. But how different is it really from, you know, getting sent to a different elemental plane in, in a fantasy game or, or you know, even to another fantasy world? You know? It, uh, very it, different, it, actually. Not... Um, well... I mean, it just core mechanics wise it's very different game than D. um you know if you if you were to take a, a D D character sheet and line it up against a world of darkness character sheet it is so vastly different like it's very yeah. extreme different um so i mean if you if you were wanting to do that and not have your your table rebel um pretty fear some members because you might have some members who are more fiercely rebelling against it than others um, you will likely have a better chance if you're already introducing them to the concepts, the the core concepts of that new game engine that you're wanting to, yeah, to I, use. I forget that, you know, uh, since I played a lot of Palladium and a lot of TSR products that, that were easily translatable, and even when I was translating things from like Villains and Vigilantes to D&D or something like that, you know, I could usually figure it out and people were happy. Um but yeah, uh, you know, there are so many fantasy stories that, that do the sort of dimension or genre hopping. If you think about it, you know, whether it be from modern day to fantasy or something like that, you know, at some point, Dark Tower the series should, does that. At some, at some point, the, the players should kind of expect, you know, a little bit of, you know, dimension traveling unless they, you know, put that in their social contract at the beginning of the game or something like that. Um, it, it's kind of one of those tropes that's, that's eventually gonna, gonna crop it, you know, crop its way into the game at some point or another. <laughs> Just well, a fancy yeah, light yeah. step. Right. But you know, yeah. when it's, you know, it, 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 you know, depending on how far apart the genres are, it might not be too too much of a stretch for their imagination. Hopefully not. And what is Max significantly advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Yeah, Max makes a good point there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got no traction being family friendly for five years. Started to say poo poo words, and we're still growing. It's strange. I, well, it's it, it, the human psychology is you know. Uh, quite literally insane to, st to be, you know, from the very beginnings. It's, um, you know, it, it it's just weird. And Mage's music, Musings got, uh, though I did once read about a D&D &D campaign where the PCs time traveled and the DM switched them back through the various editions, rules on the fly. That sounded fun. Right, right. Uh, you know, they had uh, they had Star Frontiers, they had Gamma World, Boot Hill, uh, Gangbusters, and I think something else I'm forgetting. Um, Marvel superheroes. It, 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 there's no reason you 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 couldn't get away with it. Just again, read the room. Now, uh, be, before we run out of time, I want to hit the last question. And if any yeah. of you guys out there have uh, any ideas. Uh, please, please, you know, feel free to drop them in there. Which is, where can you go to find new players for your new game? So I kind of touched on this briefly, and I know not everyone has a gaming store within easy reach of them, uh, or or um, within a short drive of them. But uh, uh, gaming stores can be a good source to pick up new players. Um, you can also, as I said, you know, your your local library might actually be running a game night. Um, you might check with them. And if they're not, you know, they might consider running a game night. It, you know, it generates interest in, you know, uh, young people to read and, and play games and get to the 
the point of, oh, hey, I can read that story and bring that the characters over to this game. You absolutely can. That's actually how I started playing D&D was, you know, I was told I could build characters like Boromir or uh, Legolas or uh, uh, Faramir. I, I, I could build these characters in a game and play them. And I'm like, that sounds amazing. Like 12 year old me was like, yes, sign me up. How do I play this? Um, you know, how, how do I play uh, Strider the Ranger? Uh, granted, 3.5 was not the greatest engine to play a, a Ranger. Um, I will admit they were pretty lackluster. Um, I mean, not as lackluster as the Bard, but uh, I digress. Um, but no, so like check out your, your local libraries, your local game stores. Uh, and if, you, if you're having trouble there, um, you might try um, some online websites. Uh, there are some, I think it's like Start Playing or something like that. There, there's an online web, uh, web service that you can join games. There might be a cost associated to them. Um, I know Roll20 has a looking for group um, aspect to it where you can go look for groups. Um, you can also probably find on... Um, you know, Discord servers. If you're part of different groups of Discord servers, um, any people looking for for gaming groups, like I'm part of the Runehammer uh, Discord group, and there's LFG posts almost daily, uh, sometimes uh, weekly, and they have games going all the time. Uh, I could probably jump into them if I wasn't already, you know, at my desk at work. Um, so I mean. There, there are a multitude of ways to find games um, and games you might be interested in with like-minded people. Um, you might even go to some of your local conventions. Uh, like I've got one coming up here, uh, April 1st. It's called Limitless Con, and it's a little town. Uh, I think it's Lex Lexington, Illinois. And um, I don't know much about it, but I also have a local con called Peoria Con. I'm sure there's potential for games there. So you can meet up with people at local conventions and exchange information to be able to play online or uh, meet up at a uh, local game store of their of theirs. Um, you know, drive out to their location. Um, so I mean, it's it's really you know getting putting yourself out there to meet people in places that you generally probably wouldn't have even considered. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to try to get caught up on chat while you answer this. Which, uh, which one? Oh, oh sorry. Uh, your I your question. Your own question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wanted to say hi to Biggest Geek. Uh, I'm still wait waiting to hear from Joe. Um, I mean, you know, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I missed your show this week. I, I had, you know, real life mm -hmm. stuff. And uh, I think I was in a game also that started early. So uh, I'll go. I'll go back and watch it. But if it's more of the OGL thing, um, probably just gonna wait until next week because, like, really up to here with with that that whole thing. But uh, Sorry, for, for me, caught up when, it, when, when it comes to you know finding new players, um, uh, the the best place I've ever found was right here on YouTube. Uh, in, in all my my life, um, had I known about YouTube, you know, years ago, I I, I would have, you know, started doing this and, and and all this a lot sooner, and probably went through you know half a dozen different channels before I got to the one with just me and my boy, and that's that's the way, I'm, I'm glad it it turned out. But I have met so many great people through through YouTube and friends of theirs, etc. Uh, starting literally uh, thanks to uh, Cal Benoni. He introduced me to Biggest Geekist. Biggest Geekist introduced me to so many other people. And I was thinking, and, and Jade and I were talking about this uh, over the weekend, um, we were thinking about helping you guys. If you guys are really looking for, for players and, and you're having trouble finding players for online games because we can't help you, you know, in your local area, but um, – we're thinking about doing a show where we will let you guys come on and give us your, your pitch for the game, 
and the night, you know, give us the details when you want to play, what game you want to play, what kind of players you're looking for, and, you know, the schedule, you know, and we'll, we'll let you come on and, um, you know, recruit players, you know. Uh, it would be interesting to see, you know, what games you guys are planning on running this year. You know, I'm still going to roll with that. It's a new year thing for at least till February, so so deal with it. Um, but, you know, if if somebody out there is really having a hard time finding players for a game, for an online game, and they're just not reaching people, whether it be through Discord or Facebook or things like that, uh, and, and you want to, you know, play with people you've, you've seen or heard or listened to on YouTube and things like that, you know, may, maybe we can work something out and help you guys find – you know, your tribe, so to speak, because I, I've been so fortunate and so lucky to have been in games with, with people like Jade and Crafty and Bruce and Bloodworth and so many other people. Rick, of course, one of the one of the greatest GMs out there. Um, I, I haven't got to play with Fritz, but one of these days that, that's going to come around. And... You know, I, I've, I've been, uh, you know, at this hobby for 45 years. And honestly, some of the best games I've ever played were with you guys online. Yeah, you know, I had some great games with my old friends. But they they did not always approach it the way most of us would here now with a little bit more seriousness. Most of my old gaming groups were, were very much like Bruce's games on Saturday a bunch of good friends just goofing off and playing a game at the same time. But when it comes to, you know, the best game you can be in, when it comes to the role playing and the immersion and, and all the things that go along with it, you guys have been the tops. Hmm. Wow. And don't get me wrong. I, I'm always going to love my my friends. We've been through thick and thin together. You know, weddings, childs, the children. You know, births, and, and even the, the you know the the death of a few of our friends and things like that. But it's a different kind of gaming and a different kind of relationship. You know, we all have those friends that you know that aren't as into the hobby as we are and never will be. But they'll show up every once in a while for a game. But you know, if if, if they call me on the phone in the middle of the night saying you know, they, 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 you know, they need my help, you know, I'm there, you know, if, if Connell calls me up in the middle of the night, I'm going to one, know he's drunk and two, you know, tell him, why didn't you call Jade? Cause there's no way I'm bailing you out of jail. Um, but yeah, you guys know what I mean. Cause I'll be asleep. <laughs> well, I'll likely be asleep. You know, I, I'm told, I'm totally just messed with, with my little brother, but you, you, you know, you know what I mean? We, we, we've got those friends and then we've got other friends and, you know, sometimes they're never going to meet, you know. Uh, I, I'm working on trying to get a couple of my, my regular game friends to, to come on camera. My friend Kevin, he's been on my show a couple of times, but, you know, he, he doesn't even own any books anymore, you know. Um, life happens, and sometimes, you know, you got to make sacrifices. And if, you know, you know, I were in some of my friends' positions, I could see how I would no longer have books. But then again, I'd probably be, you know, on my way to jail or something anyways, because I've got books that I've had. Hell, I've got books of my old man's that he had when he was a kid. I'm a bit of a pack rat, so I'm going to hang on to my stuff. But you guys know what I'm I'm getting at, you know. Um, this and, is you literally... know, one of the. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say this is literally, I think, the best place to find gamers that will fit with you and your style and your desires, your wants and your needs. And I, I really can't think of a better place. Yeah. And speaking on that, you know, it, most of you I'm sure are already part of our discord. Um, if you're not, I can get the link uh, to shadow in private chat and he can post it in our uh, 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 live chat here. Um but if you are part of our Discord, uh, Gatekeepers Discord, you know what, hey, no. um, I got a better idea. What's that? Oh shit! I can't make you a moderator. 
No, nope, not, well, not while we're in the show. Not while uh, we're in okay. the show, but that's fine. Um, I will get you the link, and you can post this into uh, from private chat into live chat. There you go. I just want to copy that text and uh, post it in there. So if you're, you know, if you are part of our Discord uh, server, you know, you can link up with other members yeah, no, in our actually. Discord. You can't. Oh wait, oh, there, that's unfortunate. Know, wait. Uh, no, wait, wait, maybe. Let me, let me see. Okay, uh, so you can link up with other, you know, people who are part of our Discord, and you can you can go into the general and miscellaneous, or even the discussion forum, and post an LFG um, uh, starter. And be like, hey, I'm looking for a VTT group or I'm looking to to play games because I haven't played in like a year and a half. Um, and, you know, see who responds. And you can do that to your different groups as well that you because I'm assuming you have multiple servers. I'm on uh, 16, 17 or more servers. And I could probably go to any one of them that are gaming really and be like, hey, let's get a game uh group together this weekend and you know let, let's go through the uh um like first area of raponathuk and see who bites um yeah i know so, yeah. i can't do it um, i can't i can't put the okay. link well uh here tell you what uh i will put it into my uh social or uh yeah social area on my channel uh <laughs> yeah uh legion of myth uh is on uh, like 20 ish discords uh yep. yeah um so uh youtube does have a um like a social uh posting board and i will put the link there uh tonight uh, available for people to go find as well um and yeah Get out there and play games, people. That's what the hobby is. Yep. Ah, community tab. There it is. I will post it there. Yeah, schedules can be a pain um, still, but we, you know, we can scare up a group of uh, most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, um, I, I actually just put out a um, survey to a bunch of my friends um, just to see and, and some of my server uh, servers I'm on just to see like what people's interests are in the hobby. Um, and I've gotten some pretty awesome results, uh, even from just I think the 12 people who uh, who filled out my survey. Um, and it basically like what kind of genre do you like? What kind of you know, uh, themes within that genre or do you like and, and so forth? And like, what kind of days and time slots are you available for? Uh, just to see like what I had available uh, from all the friends that I, I have contacts with. Um, and uh, some of the, some of the data was quite awesome uh, to see. Um, there's not yeah, a lot of love so for um, sci-fi. Yeah, like, well, or even worse, Western. Seriously, yeah. Western is not doing so hot. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and, and yeah, I schedules think, are I always think a pain. I a, a soft spot for it, you know, one, because of my old man uh, who, who left this world way too young, and two, because it, it's so many other genres are so easily molded into that genre from Star Trek to Firefly, even bits of Star Wars, you know so obviously took inspiration from them but when it comes to just playing the genre like nah hey i'm okay with mixing a little you know this genre with that genre like, just i just want it to look western you know what i mean it doesn't have to be <laughs> you know what i mean i i, I asked both I, I think I, I i think you would have appreciated my um neo guardians uh game set within uh chronicles of magic setting uh because it had that like um turn of the century like 1900s era feel like the west was still wild so to say um in in the game world and uh there were like train robberies and and all of the you know the standard like tropes you would see in a western um especially towards the beginning of the game 
Yeah, so, people yes, throw it in great examples. Deadlands. Uh, I, 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 mm-hmm. I like them so much that in Bo's, Bo's uh, sci-fi Starship Troopers-esque military campaign, I, I rolled up a, 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 you know, a, a kid from Backwater World, uh, you know, rifleman, going to be the sniper of the team. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll find a way, you know. It's, it's just something yeah. about it, you know. I mean, obviously, if you're playing a full-on straight fantasy game, it doesn't work out so well. But believe it or not, I, I, I've actually found ways to make it work. But that's a, <laughs> a topic for another night. We are almost out of time, my friends. Uh, Jade, what have you got going on this this week or this month? Uh, hopefully I can put together an unboxing of something I kickstarted. Um, I'm hoping I have all of the boxes for it. I was told that, uh, it might arrive in up to three boxes and I haven't received a second or third box yet. So I'm hoping I got everything. So I'm hoping to do an unboxing, um, probably over the weekend. Um, beyond that, I am looking forward to, uh, uh, the next topic as well. Um, Tomorrow night we have, um, hold on, what was the name of that game Jade mentioned earlier? So the the name of the game that I mentioned earlier um, is my own setting uh, with my friend Reese. Um, we call it the Chronicles of Magic. Um, I'm hoping at some point we can maybe work together and collaborate to put out a, uh, a system agnostic setting book. Um, detailing out uh, the modern era, the prehistory era, as well as the high fantasy eras. Um, Science fiction is a place we didn't really delve into much in our own games. Um, But it mostly ran on a uh, D&D 3.X based system when we played it. Um, And then the actual game name was called Neo Guardians. And uh, it's a levels 0 to 50 plus game. Uh, where the characters, some of the characters eventually become demigod esque. Um, <laughs> yes, as long as Reese can hold his booze. Um, man, that was a that was a great bachelor party. Uh, thank you, Scott, and uh, everyone who attended that one. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, as far as uh, what else I've got going, uh, like I said, the unboxing uh, tomorrow night is gatekeepers. We are not gatekeepers. Table breakers. We're doing. Um, uh, dragons uh, as I believe it, good influences to the party or good influences to the game world. Um, I've got a few examples I'm going to be using. Um, but beyond that, I'm also looking forward to next week when we go over, let me uh, pull up our uh, schedule in the discord chat. Uh, let's see here. Events. Next week, we're going over squireling, squires, sidekicks, hirelings, and followers. How to handle the foibles of leadership. That's coming next week on Connell's channel, The Scar DM. How about you, sir? You know, uh, besides the things you just mentioned, a uh, little guy and I have a craft video tomorrow night. I'm in a game Friday. I have a show Saturday, the, the Sci-Fi Shadow Chat. Um, but most of my time lately has been taken up by by painting or playing actual games. And, you know, the, the, the boy and I, we've, we've got our regular schedule down Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday videos together. And, you know, I'll, I'll be popping up on Hungar's show tomorrow and, and various other channels. Um, you, you, you guys know we, we run a, a pretty crazy schedule here. Uh Sometimes a video a day, sometimes five a day. It all depends on what, what you know, what's going on. And, uh, you know, I appreciate all of you guys coming in tonight and visiting both of our channels, as well as all the new guys out there, Bo and Squirrel. And, you know, let's not forget Rick. Rick, give his channel some love. That's 28 millimeter RPG. Go check these guys out. Give them, you know, all kinds of support. They deserve it. They've earned it. And, you know, they're, they're good friends of ours. And we'll, we'll, um, we'll look at it as a personal favor. You know, if we can get these guys all up there, you know, to, to 500 or more like myself. Uh, so they could do their giveaways, right? Because, you know, that's going to be the thing. You get to 500, you got to give something away. You know, give, give a little back to the community because 
believe it or not, uh, the old adage is true. It is really better to give than to receive. And with that, I want to say good night to everybody. Thank you guys for all showing up. Have a blessed week. We love you guys. And Jay, want to take us out? I'm going to use one that uh, Baron's been using a lot. Um, you know, time is a finite thing. And uh, you guys have spent uh, time with us this evening, and we really appreciate that. Um, you know, we really appreciate you guys being active in the chat and uh, giving us good suggestions on our on our channel, uh, on our Discord channels. Um, so thank you very much for spending your time with us. Have a great night, everyone.